What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with our tape diagram playlist. Today, we're going to be taking multiplicative comparison models and doing division with them. Again, so excited to have you with us. So let's rip the tape off and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to develop a multiplicative comparison model to solve a division word problem. So if you've been with us, we covered this last lesson, so we won't go over too much, but a multiplicative comparison model visually shows a multiplicative relationship between two or more quantities. You would use it if you're comparing different quantities through the lens of multiplication, right? So typically you'd see it when you say times more than, times as many as, they want you to compare groups of things opposed to just saying, okay, Johnny has five more apples than Andrew, right? It's not addition, subtraction, it's multiplication and comparing. And your key thoughts are the exact same as last lesson. Number one, make sure you start both models at the same place. Number two, label the models correctly. And then number three, neatness. Make sure the groups are equal because multiplication division all come from equal groups. Okay, so there's a couple different reasons you would divide for multiplicative comparison but if you can draw the tape diagram and label it your students will be able to figure it out so this is a very similar question to our last lesson it says gina ate 35 cupcakes for breakfast that is seven times more than madeline how many cupcakes did madeline eat okay so my um, i'm gonna do my sides check if you have another word problem strategy that's fine um it's probably not as good a size check but that's just me how many cupcakes did madeline eat okay so I'm gonna say Madeline eats blank more cupcakes, all right? And I would encourage you to have whatever word problem strategy you have, have a statement being written first. Um, my wife is also a teacher, but she doesn't ever like to listen to me, so she won't do sides check, but she just made her own thing, but she still writes a statement first. And that's important because that leads you to identify, okay? For all you out there who are married, you know spouse will never listen to you. Amen, amen. But that's okay. So Madeline eats blank more cupcakes. I'm looking for anything about Madeline and anything about cupcakes. Gina ate 35 cupcakes for breakfast. That is seven times more than Madeline, okay? So I'm gonna box this because this is a multiplicative comparison sentence. It's telling me a multiplication equation. It's saying seven times more than Madeline. How many cupcakes did Madeline eat? So I have my students annotate that as part of the identify. It's just gonna help them later. And then this word right here, I love these words. I always tell them the that is talking about the sentence before. So instead of saying Gina had seven times more than Madeline, it said that, right? So that, meaning the 35 cupcakes, is, is is an equal sign, right? Seven times more than Madeline. So Gina equals seven times more than Madeline. That thought process uh, it takes a little bit of time to teach, but if you stick with it, it will pay huge dividends. So now I'm going to develop my plan. I know I'm doing a multiplicative comparison model because it said the word seven times more than it told me I'm comparing using multiplication. So I know I'm comparing Gina and Madeline, and I'm going to start with equal groups here. Okay. And then I'm not going to be, a lot of our students, they like to rush through and they'll make Madeline have seven times more without even thinking about it. You have to stop. You have to teach them how to think through it. Gina has seven times more than Madeline. So that means Gina's tape diagram is going to be seven times, it should be equal, but I'm not doing a great job, seven times more than Madeline, all right? Now, some of you are saying, what if it was like 35 times more? Well, if it was 35 times more, and I'll do it here for this one, I would, I would label it one, two, three, dot, 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 and whatever the last one is. So for this one, it would just be seven, okay? Um, that way you're not drawing, you know, your tape diagram doesn't need to be 15 boxes long as long this goes back to the same thing we did for our part whole model you're showing that there are really seven boxes here even though you didn't show all of them now it says gina ate 35 cupcakes all right not 35 in each she had 35 cupcakes that means her whole tape diagram is equal to 35 okay that's what it's telling me i want to know how many cupcakes madeline ate so my question mark is right here this is all the information i have i have enough to answer this question I know that Gina has seven equal groups and she had a 35 total, right? She had 35 cupcakes total into seven equal groups. Goes back to our part whole model and dividing. Okay, well division is a number into equal groups. So if I divide 35 divided by seven, I know each of these has to be five, right? Well, if these groups are equal, then that means this one also has to be five. So my answer to my question is five. So I was dividing for this one, 
but I had to set up my multiplicative comparison model to help me understand that. So just like we talked about last lesson, there are several different types of questions they can give you for this problem. They could say, how many cupcakes did they eat all together? Or they could say, how many more cupcakes did Gina eat than Madeline? Well, just like always, if they're asking you to bring things together, they're asking you to add, they're asking you to group things. So we just put our question mark right here. We'd still have to divide to figure out how much Madeline had, but now we know Gina had 35 and Madeline had five, which means they had a total of 40 altogether. So same tape diagram, your question mark just goes in a different place. How many more cupcakes did Gina eat than Madeline? Well, guess what? Now we're just doing the same additive comparison model and we're combining two different models. Multiplicative comparison, additive comparison. If this is equal to 35, then this green part right here that we're missing has to be equal to 30 because 35 minus five would give me 30. So uh, Gina had 30 more cupcakes than Madeline. So that's why, we draw our, that's why we write our statement. Our statement helps us know where to put the question mark for each problem. So instead of doing a U try, I'm gonna, we're just gonna do another I do, um, and you can write this down in your notes if you're taking notes. We can kind of turn this into a we do together, okay? This is the same type of question, but a different way it might be presented. So now it says Gina and Madeline ate 122 cupcakes combined. Madeline ate 12 times more than Gina. How many cupcakes did Gina eat? So if I'm doing my sides check over here, I like to write it down so I can remember what I'm doing. My statement's gonna say, Gina ate blank cupcakes, all right? So I'm looking for anything about cupcakes, anything about Gina. So Gina and Madeline ate 120 cupcakes combined. All right, I'm gonna annotate that with an addition sign right here. Madeline ate 12 times more than Gina. Now I put a box around this because that's a multiplicative comparison. I'll always have my students box that so they can see it. So this is saying Madeline ate 12 times more than Gina. Okay, so 12 times Gina. How many cupcakes did Gina eat? So now I've, I've done my statement and I've identified and those two things have helped me realize I'm doing a multiplicative comparison model because it said 12 times more than I'm comparing Madeline and Gina using multiplication. So I'm going to start with Gina and Madeline. I'm going to give each of them one group. There we go. Perfect. And I know that Madeline ate 12 times more than Gina. So Madeline equals 12 times Gina. So Madeline's going to have 12 times uh, more groups than Gina. And again, I don't want to draw 12. and I, They should be equal. I'm doing my best to keep them equal. Um, I'll just kind of do right here. And then I want to make sure I label them. One, two, three, four, five, dot, 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 12. Okay. Now this one is unique because it's telling you how many they had combined. So when you added Gina plus Madeline together, that equaled 120. And again, this is why I love this question. It's still, it's a different way to ask the question, but it's still multiplicative comparison. So if you draw your tape diagram, you can very easily figure this out. So I know when I add Gina and Madeline together, that was 120. So Madeline had 12 groups. Gina had one group. That's 13 groups together. So I have 13 equal groups and I have 120 that needs to be shared between 13 equal groups. So my equation for this would be 120 divided by 13. And I didn't really think this one through, but that's okay. When you divide that, you're going to get a decimal. I'll just kind of truncate it after the hundreds place. Obviously, you would think more through this. I thought about editing it, but we all make mistakes, right? So each group is 9 and 2300. So Gina ate 9 holes and 2300s of another hole, right? And so that's how you would do this, right? You have, you know, it's the same exact tape diagram. You're just dividing it into equal groups, okay? The other question might ask you, how many cupcakes did Madeline eat? So now that you have, you figured out that each one is nine and 2300s, you could take that and multiply it by 12, right? And you can figure out that she ate 110 cupcakes and 7600s of another one, all right? Now, obviously, that's hopefully not true unless there, you know, there could be many cupcakes, like many Oreos. I could definitely eat 120 of those. Uh, but that's how you do it. You still set up the same tape diagram, but you answer the question by making sure you have the question mark in the, oh, I forgot it right there, making sure you have the question mark in the right place. And for the second question, it would be right there. So understanding how to manipulate these tape diagrams is going to lead your students to figuring out what you're doing. Because really, this wasn't a division problem. This was a multiplication problem, right? You wanted 13 groups of something that equaled 120, and then to solve it, you had to rewrite it as division. So you're, you're constantly talking about inverse operations, 
which is gonna help them when they get to algebra. So here's what we want you to take with you, Dan, your cassette tape. Multiplicative comparison models help students understand the relationship between multiplication and division. It's really the same, I mean, they're inverse operations. They're part of the same fact family. It's gonna look the same on the tape diagram, except for one, you might be trying to figure out the whole, and for one, you might be trying to figure out the groups or how many are in each group. And once they start to do this, they start to realize that relationship and it starts to click and again, it's going to take them to algebra when they're constantly doing inverse operations and they're going to have a better understanding of it. They're going to thank you and they're probably going to send you a bunch of gift cards when they're rich and famous because they're good at math. Thank you so much for checking out today. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel. Check out all, the, all our other teacher resources, our songs and our student lessons. Uh, share with your friends. We would love to have you join our Instruct Beats family. Thank you again. Instruct Beats out.